एटीन हंड्रेड आवर्स पाकिस्तान स्टैंडर्ड टाइम असलकुम दिस इज रेडियो पाकिस्तान द न्यूज रेड बाय सुमेरा कावल द हेडलाइंस फर्स्ट डिफेंस एंड मार्टर्स डे इज बींग ऑब्जर्व टूडे टू पे ट्रिब्यूट टू द मार्टर्स एंड गाजीज एंड रीअफर्म कमिटमेंट टू डिफेंड द मदरलैंड अगेंस्ट ऑल थ्रेट्स Prime Minister has urged overseas Pakistanis to invest in Pakistan assuring them of removing hurdles in their way. President has called for imparting market oriented education to engineering students to meet the emerging challenges in modern world. Foreign minister has called upon the international community to provide financial assistance to Afghans on humanitarian grounds to prevent any threat of civil war in the country. Taliban have assured that Afghan land will not be allowed to be used against Pakistan. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir strict restrictions are intact and internet and train services remained suspended for the fifth consecutive day today to prevent a march towards Eidgah to offer prayers for martyrs of Kashmir. And now the news in detail. Defence and Martyrs Day is being observed today to pay tributes to the martyrs and ghazis and to reaffirm commitment to defend the motherland against all threats. It was on this day in 1965 that the Indian forces crossed international border in the darkness of night to attack Pakistan, but the nation but the nation foiled the nefarious designs of the enemy. This year's Defence and Martyrs Day theme is Our Martyrs, Our Pride, Salute to All Relatives Belonging to Ghazis and Shaheeds. The day dawned with 31 gun salute at the federal capital and the 21 gun salute at provincial capitals. Special prayers were offered after Fajr for progress and prosperity of the country and independence of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir from the cruel clutches of India. President Dr Arif Alvi and Prime Minister Imran Khan in their separate messages on the occasion of Defence and Martyrs Day have renewed the nation's pledge to never compromise on sovereignty, security and territorial integrity of the country. In his message the president said Pakistan being fully cognizant of developments in its neighborhood is committed to securing peace and prepared to thwart any plot hatched by to hamper peace. Dr Arif Alvi emphatically stated that Pakistan will never back away from its principled stand on the issue of Jammu and Kashmir. In his message the prime minister said India today stands exposed before the world community for its bid to hamper peace in the region especially with reference to Pakistan. He said India will have to give Kashmiris their due right to self determination under the UN Security Council resolutions sooner the better. Prime Minister Imran Khan has urged overseas Pakistanis to invest in Pakistan assuring them of removing hurdles in their way addressing a ceremony in connection with the ground breaking of an international hotel in Nathia Gali today he said overseas Pakistanis are our big asset the prime minister regretting the brain drain from the country due to lack of opportunities said the government is now facilitating and providing opportunities to expats to invest in Pakistan He said this will help enhance our foreign exchange reserves and provide job opportunities to the youth. Imran Khan said the country has immense potential of tourism and the government is promoting this sector for wealth creation as it can help retire country's foreign debt. President Dr Arif Alvi has called for imparting market oriented education to the engineering students to meet emerging challenges. Addressing a ceremony of Pakistan Engineering Council's governing body in Islamabad today, he said PAC should work to create a mechanism to develop connection between universities and industry. He said profession of engineering is associated with building civilizations and that it toward the engineers who made Pakistan an atomic power. highlighting the changing trends in the world he said development policies are shifting from brick and mortar projects to development of knowledge intellect and human resources speaking on the occasion minister for science and technology sayed shibli faraz said development of engineering sector is imperative for the economic progress of the country he said increasing the export of engineering goods is our target Finance Minister Shaukat Tareen says the prudent policies of the present government have stimulated economic recovery amid the COVID-19 pandemic as it is heading in the right direction. 
Chairing a meeting to review the trade balance situation in Islamabad today, he said the enhanced revenue collection along with improved ratings indicate that economic economy has gained momentum and is geared towards an inclusive and sustainable economic growth. The minister said the economy registered a growth rate of 4% of the current fiscal year and there is an increased demand for imports. This is Radio Pakistan. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has called upon the international community to take concrete steps to provide financial assistance to Afghans on humanitarian grounds to prevent any threat of civil war in the country. Talking to Italian Foreign Minister in Islamabad today, he also stressed the need to remain vigilant so that spoilers should not sabotage the regional peace. Shah Mahmood Qureshi said Pakistan helped evacuation of 12,000 foreign nationals and is determined to extend all possible cooperation in this regard in this future. The Italian Foreign Minister thanked Pakistan for evacuating Italian nationals from Afghanistan. They agreed on enhancing parliamentary interactions and to undertake joint efforts to safeguard mutual interest. Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed has welcomed Taliban's desire to become part of multi-billion dollars China-Pakistan economic corridor project. Talking to the media persons in Islamabad today, he said the CPAC is the jugular vein of Pakistan and the friendship between Pakistan and China is higher than the Himalayas. The minister said Pakistan desires peace and stability in Afghanistan as progress of Pakistan and Afghanistan are interlinked. Taliban say they have taken complete control of Afghanistan's Panshir province. Addressing a news conference in Kabul today, Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid announced a general amnesty for the people of Panshir. Zabiullah Mujahid said Kabul airport is being operationalized with assistance of Turkey, Qatar and an organization of Middle East countries. Responding to a question, the Taliban spokesperson said a Pakistani delegation comprising security officials visited Kabul and put forward their security concerns. He assured that the Afghan land will not be allowed to be used against Pakistan. He said Pakistan has also given the assurance of its complete cooperation for peace and stability in Afghanistan. The Taliban spokesperson said they want the best of diplomatic and economic ties with China and Pakistan and expressed a desire to become part of projects such as CPAC and CASA 1000. In a statement, Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid has said they will welcome German investment in Afghanistan. He said the Taliban would pave the way for investment and help in areas including health, education and infrastructure. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, strict restrictions are intact and internet and train services remained suspended for the fifth consecutive day today to prevent a march towards Eidgah, Sirinagar as parts of its five-day protest program against the custodial death of veteran Hurriyat leader. Call for the march was given by the All Parties Hurriyat Conference to offer Fatiha for the martyrs of Kashmir. The All Parties Hurriyat Conference has also asked the Kashmiri diaspora to hold protests outside Indian embassy embassies in world major capitals tomorrow to record protest against depriving Kashmiri people of performing last rites of Sayyid Ali Gilani by Modi-led fascist Indian government. Meanwhile, the great champion of Kashmir cause, veteran journalist, intellectual and executive director of Kashmir Media Service, Sheikh Tajamul Salam, has passed away in Islamabad at the age of 67 years. In Myanmar, the military rulers have agreed for a ceasefire until the end of year to ensure distribution of humanitarian aid. In a statement, the envoy of Southeast Asian Bloc said that this step has been taken in response to the request of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations to stop bloodshed in Myanmar. And finally, the weather. Mainly hot and dry weather is likely to prevail in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, rain with wind and thunderstorm is expected in Islamabad, Upper Punjab, Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Kashmir. To end the news, here are some of the headlines once again. Defence and Martyrs Day is being observed today to pay tributes to the martyrs and Ghazis and reaffirm commitment to defend the motherland against all threats. Prime Minister has urged overseas Pakistanis to make full investment in Pakistan, assuring them of removing hurdles in their way. <music> Taliban have assured that Afghan's, Afghan land will not be allowed to be used against Pakistan.
In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, strict restrictions are intact and internet and train services remain suspended for the fifth consecutive day today to prevent a march towards Eidgah to offer prayers for martyrs of Kashmir. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radio Pakistan News Office.